Republican's reaction to the racial incident in a Gaylord classroom, advice after a Burt Town Hall meeting, and the aftermath of a Norman shooting. This is OU Nightly. Now we hear from strong words from a student that was in a classroom Tuesday when a Gaylord professor used a racial slur. Hello and thanks for joining us. I'm Tevis Hillis. And I'm Austin Hernandez. Instead of a lecture from Professor Gay today, students met with the Gaylord leadership team. Our very own Cal Day has been following this story since Tuesday. He joins us live. Cal. Yeah, good evening, Tevis and Austin. I'm just outside Gaylord College, where earlier today the dean of this college, Ed Kelly, as well as many of the university's leadership, met together with the students enrolled in that capstone course to discuss what happens next. Now, the students that I talked to that uh, were leaving the meeting tell me that this meeting was a step in the right direction. I think that it was a big step for them to call a meeting with us um, about something that happened directly to us. Janae Reeves is one of many students who attended a meeting organized by Gaylord College Dean Ed Kelly earlier today. This comes two days after Reeves and nearly 30 others listened to Professor Peter Gade use a racial slur in class. I've been shaken up for the past few days. Today, Kelly and other leaders from the college met with the students enrolled in the class to talk about what happened. Reeves calls this a step in the right direction. Um, the meeting was absolutely beneficial. Um, I do think that we needed this um, in order to hear our frustrations, concerns, and our perspectives on the issue that happened on Tuesday. And we've reached out to Dean Kelly's office several times today. We've been told by the people who work inside of his office that he's been in and out of meetings and he has not had time to respond to our inquiries. For now, we're live just outside Gaylord Hall. Cal Day, OU Knightley. Now, OU Vice President for Diversity and Inclusion, Dr. Belinda Hicks Hypolite, provided a statement regarding the racial slur. She emphasizes the need to come together as a campus, saying, we affirmed for our students that we see you, we honor you, and we respect you. We all have the responsibility to do better and be a better OU for future generations. And the Black Emergency Response Team hosted a town hall last night inviting everyone in the black community to attend. On Twitter, the response team said the intent of the meeting was to address concerns over the recent events at Gaylord Hall. Those not in the black community who identified as allies were directed to the union next door where an additional meeting was taking place. At the ally meeting, students and professors gathered to show solidarity for the black community. Aaron Simpson, OU Advocates Coordinator, led the discussion referencing the National Association of Black Journalists statement as a guideline for those how to respond. The best word I can use is just grateful that there are people that don't look like me that still may not feel the exact pain that I feel, but feel any pain at all. I can tell you that at least saying something helps because um, it helps to know, you know, uh, give a hug, ask someone how they're doing. Um, you know, if they haven't eaten, you know, ask them, ask, ask people that have been a part of this, you know, who have been affected by this. Have you eaten today? You know, like, would you like to hang out? Would you like to get away from the campus? Things that help with our mental health is the best way, um, is the best answer that I could have for the ally uh, community. NABJ haven't released any further statements about future actions. And switching gears a little bit, Tevis, waking up this morning, getting hit with that cold air, it didn't feel too good, did it? No, it didn't. It was freezing. Oh, and we are feeling it today as Thomas Schmidt joins us from our National Weather Center with the first look at the forecast. Thomas, will it be a warm day for Valentine's? That's right, I'm right here in the National Weather Center, which is on OU's research campus, just south of their main campus there. Take a look at the weather wall here behind me. This is our lowest observed temperatures since midnight. So the air temperature in Norman was 20 degrees. However, that north wind uh, dropped our wind chill values into the single digits. Now, taking a look at current temperatures now, we're th only slightly above freezing there in Norman, just 33 degrees, cooler for you folks up in the northwestern part of the state with, those nor with that north wind still 
sticking around. Now, uh, Valentine's Day forecast all coming up. I will tell you now, that is going to be a little colder, but we are going to warm those temperatures up with a warm and windier weekend coming up in just a couple days there. And when is our next system? We've been on this wet pattern. Is that pattern going to continue? Guys, it's all coming up in just a bit. Back to you. Attorney General William Barr took a swipe at President Donald Trump today. Caroline Grace has details on that and the rest of today's headlines from the News Center. Caroline. Thank you, Austin. The Attorney General says the President's tweets about Justice Department prosecutors and cases are making it impossible for him to do his job. Barr made the comment during an interview with ABC News just days after his Justice Department overruled its own prosecutors. They had recommended that Trump's longtime ally Roger Stone be sentenced to seven to nine years in prison. Barr lowered the amount of prison time that the Justice Department would seek. Barr said that Trump's tweets created perception problems for, for the department, and he denies that there was any type of an order from the president to recommend a lesser sentence for Stone. President Trump's national emergency declaration at the U.S. southern border will stay in effect for another year. Usually, national emergencies expire after one year, but the White House submitted a document to the Federal Register for the emergency to remain. This extension allows the administration to continue using Pentagon funds to complete hundreds of miles on the wall. Arrests at the border remain high. However, according to U.S. Customs and Border Protection data, the arrests have dropped by 9,000 since January 2019. The Senate passed a Powers Act on the Iran War, limiting the president's ability to use military action without congressional approval. Leaders shot across the bow. A bipartisan majority of senators don't want the president waging war without congressional approval. The measure was approved by a 55 to 45 vote and will now go to the House for approval. President Trump does have the option to veto the resolution if passed by both houses of Congress. And authorities in Chickasha are searching for two missing teens. Both were last seen at Chickasha High School. Police say both boys are autistic. Back to you guys at the desk. Thank you, Caroline. Now, two people are in police custody after a shooting yesterday afternoon. The shooting occurred right around 430 in the Twin Creek Village apartment complex. One victim has been taken into the hospital and is in critical condition. Residents say the people involved did not live in the complex, but were in a car. The shooting is still under investigation and the names of the suspects have not yet been released. Oklahoma ranks 20th in the nation for the number of domestic violence cases. Taylor Emmons tells us what the city of Norman plans to do regarding these incidents. These women and one man are concerned about a troubling statistic. Domestic violence is a problem in Norman. They have gathered at St. Stephen's United Methodist Church to discuss how to tackle the problem. They're much more comfortable reporting it. People are much more comfortable calling 911. It's more acceptable. They're normal feeling like... Now, we're sorry for those technical difficulties, but we'll have that on our website later tonight so you can learn all about that. Now, we're moving on, and we're going to toss it right down. Today, a new law goes into effect as we're hoping to help young lungs. When we return, see what this so-called flavor ban is doing to protect your child and how officials plan to stop this ongoing issue. Plus, something adults do every day when it comes to medication that's actually causing more harm than good. Straight ahead on OU Nightly. Government officials announced today that the state has found a reliable supply of drugs to re resume executions by lethal injection. Governor Sitz says it is important that the state is impl implementing our death penalty law with a procedure that is humane and swift for those convicted of this most heinous of crimes. This will enable the state to request execution dates inmates after 150 days. A new policy regarding e-cigarettes goes into effect today. Kayla has more on that as well as other health headlines. Kayla? Yes, an e-cigarette policy removing flavored vaping products from the U.S. market goes into effect today. The Trump administration announced the so-called flavor ban in September, saying it would be finalized in a few weeks. Months later, we are finally seeing the policy begin. 
The FDA plans to go after cartridge-based vaping products of all flavors except tobacco and menthol. The flavor ban is an attempt to get rid of products commonly used by children while still keeping healthier nicotine options for adults available. And U.S. officials confirmed the country's 15th case of the new coronavirus, an evacuee from China who had been quarantined in Texas. They are receiving excellent medical care. Um, they were, of course, not happy to learn of their diagnosis. The patient is now in isolation at a hospital and in stable condition. This is the first confirmed case in Texas. The CDC also sent out some coronavirus test kits to labs across the country and are not working as planned. The CDC is working to remake parts of the test kits. And a new study blames parents and grandparents for the death of many children. More than half of kids under age five poisoned by prescription pills ate them after adults removed them from their original containers and placed them in daily pill organizers or on bedside tables to take later. To avoid the unwanted emergency room visit after a child swallows a pill, the CDC recommends caregivers keep medications in those hard to open packages. And the world's oldest man is 112. He says the secret to a long life is to just keep smiling and to never get angry. That's all small right now, though. Yeah, we can get a couple a of more, couple of more, what, months, days? Couple, exactly. Years. What do you think a smile gets you? You know, my goal is to live to 100. So I've got to keep on smiling. Austin, what's your age? I, 80? I don't know if I could live to 80? I mean, 80? That's kind of a short goal, goal for you. I mean, but what, do you, what can you do when you're like 90 to 100? Besides? Live your best life. When do you stop you know, living maybe, life? Maybe I need to change. Maybe I need to change my mindset. Thank well, you, Well, thank Kayla. you. You're welcome. Now, a special tribute is being paid to the victims of the recent Moore tragedy. Find out how our very own NBA team is doing its part to honor the lives lost and injured. but the sun is out shining you can see behind me right there this is a uh, part of Oklahoma City the sun is beginning to set now and winds are out of the north blowing at 11 miles an hour so it feels like 28 degrees right now and the dew point is at 10 degrees so it's very dry out there too you know my skin has been a uh, been pretty dry today so you know we are in the dead of winter and you know this story says it all too we've got uh, snow showers out towards the west at the moment that is moving out towards the east um, not seeing a lot of accumulation with this it will be moving out towards the east overnight tonight We'll be seeing uh, a few clouds passing by overnight tonight as well. And, you know, going throughout the day tomorrow at the 7 o'clock hour, in the, or 7 o'clock in the morning tomorrow, we might see uh, a few snow flurries uh, coming in towards the west there. Um, but again, not really much accumulation with this at all. Our next system, there it is right up there. You saw it right there. So we got winds coming out of the south. Uh, gusting of upwards to 25 miles per hour at times uh, once that cold air mass moves out of the way and that warm air mass coming in from the south uh, creates a lot warmer temperatures uh, for the weekend. So here, uh, this is Friday afternoon for Valentine's Day. Uh, wind speeds about 15 miles per hour in Oklahoma City and Norman, but greater wind speeds will be out towards the west uh, going in throughout the day on uh, tomorrow afternoon and then Saturday morning. Again, those wind speeds will be sticking around, gusting upwards of up to 25 miles per hour at times, and then dying down Saturday night. So here's that full Valentine's Day forecast for you. We'll be starting out brisk at about 25 or 25 degrees, warming up into the uh, upper 40s or mid to upper 40s uh, throughout the afternoon. So, and then cooling off into the upper 30s uh, by tomorrow night. So cooler temperatures for your hot date. Yeah, so uh, lows tonight, 23 degrees, uh, 24 up in Oklahoma City, 25 in Ardmore and 22 in McAllister. Tomorrow we'll see our daytime high in the mid 40s. Uh, so we have a co or cooler weather coming in tonight. And then there's that full seven day forecast with uh, 70 degrees by Monday. Now, I'm ready for my uh, hot date to be in 40 degree temperature. I think I'm gonna have to wear my sweater. Not really uh, ready for that. Yeah, I don't know about that. We're gonna, <laughs> I guess we're gonna have to just wait and see and see how that turns out. We'll see, exactly. <laughs> now moving on, today high school students will have the opportunity to participate in the Thunder Run this year. As we recall, two students died from a hit and run and four others were injured. Now this team is honoring those two lives lost and the rest injured, impacted by this tragedy. Christine Burney says we encourage all high school students wanting to honor the memory of Rachel and Uredia to sign up for the Thunder Run. We stand firmly with the cross country team 
and all the students and the entire Moore community as it goes through the process in mourning and healing. What a wonderful thing to do. It is, it Absolutely. is. Let's kind of switch the gears over to sports. There seems to be a little change up you know, when it comes just... to the Astros story and their whole cheating scandal. Yeah, I heard Shannon has the rest of the information for us. That she does. Shannon, take it away. Yeah, you know, guys, owner Jim Crane really just threw us a curveball. And honestly, we're not too sure how to hit it. Don't run away because sports is next. Welcome back to OU Nightly. I'm Shannon Earhart with your sports update. The OU men's basketball team had a field day last night at the LNC. The Sooners were looking for revenge and Iowa State seemed a little caught off guard. Lindsey Gibbs has more on how the Sooners brought it home. Lindsey? All right, good afternoon, Shannon. The Sooners showed out at the showdown last night here at the LNC, taking down the Cyclones 90-61. That's the most points the Sooners have scored in a Big 12 game this season. All five starters from OU plus Javion Harmon ended the night with double-digit points. Uh, but we knew coming into this game that um, you know we couldn't have a letdown. You know we couldn't be looking ahead to the Kansas game or things like that and slip up and lose here. So um, you know we had a high intensity, you know high intensity practices leading up into this <coughs> game. Tossing to baseball, the Sooners are ready to roll, opening their season tomorrow in Florida. The men face Virginia right off the bat in Pensacola after a tough ending to the 2019 season. With eight returning field starters, OU ranks 24th in the preseason poll. Because of the rocking ending for the Sooners last season, OU is bright-eyed and bushy-tailed for a clean slate. And remember the Houston cheating scandal? Well, Jim Crane and the Astros held a press conference today with their first public apology. It's just a shame that the owner was lying to us. You know, our opinion is, um, you know, that this didn't impact the game. Jim, when talking about the Yankees there, did you say you feel like this didn't impact the game? And what do you mean by that? I, I didn't say it didn't impact the game. You know, our opinion is, um, you know, that this didn't impact the game. Found their saving grace. Coming from Boston, Mookie Betts and David Price were seen in Dodger blue yesterday. Yeah. Betts will play right field and bat leadoff, creating the deepest lineup in the National League. Not only that, but Betts and Price will make history after being the first former MVP and Cy Young winners to finish a season with one team and move together to another. I'd say it's a good day to be a Dodgers fan. And what's the saying, patience is a virtue? Well, patience is a virtue for Phoenix Sun guard Devin Booker, who will take the place of Damian Lillard in the NBA All-Star game. It's Booker's time to shine with his first career All-Star appearance in lieu of Lillard's groin injury. The guard will play alongside King James and take part in the three-point contest. Being the 10th leading scorer in the NBA, I think Booker's spot is well-deserved. And well-deserved it is. He's done such a good job working hard and getting to where he needs to be. Yeah, I agree. You know, staying in Phoenix, being loyal, and, you know, he such, he's, has such great talent. It's going to be good to see him in that, in that all-star role this, uh, this coming all-star break. But thank you, Shannon. Yeah, thanks. Sure. Now we know it's a special day. Everyone might not know about it quite yet, but we have more. And when we return, we'll tell you all about the holiday and how to celebrate in the best way. I'm Belle Trevino in the OU Nightly Newsroom. An ex-Oklahoma police officer is guilty of possessing illegal firearm silencers. Former Chandler policeman Stephen Bradley Simon admitted possessing silencers without serial numbers in a signed plea agreement on Tuesday. Simon faces up to 20 years in prison and $500,000 in fines. His sentencing will be scheduled in about 90 days. Tevis, Austin, back to you in the studio. Okay, guys, call up your bestie because you know what day it is. It's Galentine's. Um, I can relate. It became popular because of the NBC comedy series Parks and Recreation. On one 2010 episode, the main character on the show has a February 13th brunch with gifts for her close female friends and co-workers. Now, the unofficial holiday has been gaining in popularity ever since. And guess what? Some businesses are even offering deals and discounts for those occasions. Here's one. If you order on DoorDash, order a pretzel bucket from Auntie Anne's and get your free delivery with that code, Galentine's. 
Nothing like a deal. Nothing like that's a, that's actually a good deal. Yeah, absolutely. Tyler, we got any sunshine heading our way this you know, weekend? You know, we do. We have plenty of sunshine throughout the day tomorrow. It's going to be cold to start off the day in the 20s and then quickly warming up uh, into a high of 46 degrees for Friday. And look at that, 70 degrees by Monday, by the start of next week. It's going to be great. Fantastic. What a, what a great way to start your week. Absolutely. Now, what's, now what's bad about that is that now when we get good weather like that and we get, you know, used to wearing shorts and a T-shirt, the next day gets... Right back down, and we're back, back in our coats and back sweaters. Back down in the 30s. That's how Oklahoma works. Right exactly. Here. It's, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. It, it, is, it is unfortunate. You know, I'll make some calls. I'll do my best to see what I can to get the Send temperatures it up. up yep. a little bit. Sounds good. Thank Sounds you. good, so, Tyler. Yeah, you bet. Thanks for tuning in to this edition of OU Nightly. And don't forget about our newscast tomorrow, live at 430. Have a great night. Good night.